Hi everyone, I'm Devin James, the co-executive director of the Web3 Working Group, and welcome back for another episode of What Kind of Internet Do You Want? Recently, we looked at three different ways to upload files to the Rweave PermaWeb. Today, we're gonna to be looking at two more. So hit that like button if you enjoy our explorations of Web3 technology, and let's get going. For the past couple of weeks, we've been talking all about Rweave, from why the problem it solves is so important, to how it works, explored some non-custodial wallets you can use to hold and spend your AR tokens, and looked at some general use applications for uploading files to the network. Today, we're going to look at some apps that specialize in pushing podcasts and YouTube videos to the PermaWeb. First, let's check out PermaCast. I actually didn't know anything about this app, but we've started publishing this series out to podcast apps recently, and I'm assuming someone on their team must be scouring tech podcasts for anyone who'd appreciate the service their app offers, because a few weeks ago, I got a cold email from them letting me know about it. Recently, they released version two of their app, so let's go ahead and check it out at permacast.dev and see how easy it is to create a new podcast and upload an episode. Okay, so we just visit permacast.dev, and I'm going to go ahead and click on Launch App. First thing I'm going to do is click up here to connect to my AR Connect. Get myself my password. Let's turn that off. <laughs> and it's uh, reviewing the permissions that basically all of the functionality uh, over handling the keys inside of the AR Connect wallet that will be given to this application. And I need to say yes, because the whole point is that this application is going to take my content, package it up as transactions, sign those transactions, and then send them off to the internet. So I actually want to give them all those permissions. And there we go. Now, I learned, I already gave this a shot, and it didn't work right away and I got some support directly from the permacast team and they were fantastic. Um, I learned that when I initially connected my AR Connect wallet, it was showing zero balance here. And the, the issue was I actually need to go to top up with Everpay and make sure that my Everpay wallet uh, has actually been funded. So you would do that by just clicking on deposit um, and it would show you the balance in your AR Connect wallet and you decide how much to transfer to it takes a little while because it's got to settle, so I did that before starting to record this. So I've already got um, three AR tokens deposited in my Everpay wallet that uh, the, the Permacast app has access to. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to click on Add Podcast. Grab my podcast cover image. Call this. What kind of internet do you want? Author is Web3 Working Group. <clears throat> and technology focus. I'm going to go ahead and leave this out for now. We are not explicit content, so I'm going to click Upload. Okay. Excelente. All right. We have a podcast. So now let's go ahead and add an episode. Episode name. Pick my episode content. Just figuring out the fee. It's probably going to be a little bit higher. Oh, wow. Less. Interesting. Okay. And upload. Excellent. <laughs> Fantastic. Look at that. It already showed up. 
wonder if it can play yet. Over the past 50 years, data storage has seen Fabulous. its costs decrease it by an average That's of 30 and a half percent per year. Very cool. Very cool. So that's Permacast. And in just a few minutes, I created a new show uh, and I populated it with the first episode and it's already playable. So that's pretty awesome. Next, we're going to look at a simple app that I built. I call it YouTube to Arweave. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if someone else has already built a similar tool in the past, but I wanted to explore the Bundler SDK and familiarize myself more with how Arweave transactions and the Arweave file system works. And I wanted to get our whole playlist of what is Web3 videos published so that visitors to our website could either check out the Web2 hosted copies of our videos or the Web3 hosted copies, eat our own dog food, so to speak. So I didn't build an interface for it. It's just a simple command line interface app and it has two modes. I can either upload a single video or a whole playlist. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so here it is. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the GitHub repo. And in a new terminal, I hit git clone in the repo and that clones it in. Now I CD into it. And you can see in the installation instructions just tells me I just need to npm install. It's going to install all my packages. Okay. Now, next step, it tells me that I need to set up a .env file. Rather than do a new one, I've actually already got one. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy it in. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and, so this is the playlist that I ultimately want to use. There's 20 videos in it, but that would take a very long time. So let's start with just one video. Click share and grab its URL. And I can see under usage, it tells me how to actually use the app. Just type node index.js and paste or sorry, YouTube to Arweave and paste in my URL. And it keeps me kind of up to date as it goes because it's grabbing more than just the video itself. It grabs the thumbnail and it's ultimately going to grab some metadata about it. So here we can see my thumbnail, great. Here's the metadata like the description, tags, stuff like that. And this is going to take 1,500 seconds, so I'll be back in a little bit. Thank you. Okay, we're back. We've got 10 seconds left to go. It's almost finished downloading because it's actually pretty large. It's 1080p video. Okay, so it's finished downloading. Uh, total size of everything in that folder is 118 megs. Uh, it checks what the upload price is going to be, checks what my current node balance is, tells me that it is in fact sufficient. I didn't, probably should have, I don't know if I'll have time to add it, but I didn't put a progress bar for the actual uploading uh, process. Probably I'll just add a little console log that says it's uploading at this point. That way people don't think something's broken because this will definitely take a moment. Uh, the reason it's actually just take this time. The reason it's saying it's sufficient is that if it wasn't, it would actually top it up. That's why I gave it access to my uh, wallet inside that .env file. And there we go. Okay, so it's uploaded to Arweave and it created a manifest. The manifest is basically it's kind of part of the um, uh, are we file system? It's how you can kind of identify if you've got a couple of different assets that you're putting together, you can identify them within a manifest. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like real quick. So there we go. We can see we've got our MP4 and our thumbnail and that metadata all as individual Arweave transactions and I've identified those within the manifest file and then the manifest file is the last transaction that gets sent. And so this TXID S42MBQ um, 
Um, so I can't do that. All right. So let's load this block explorer. And so this uh, transaction ID is for the manifest itself. Okay, so obviously that hasn't been found yet. So go ahead and pause here and we'll come back as soon as it's visible on the block explorer. Okay, so our transaction has been found by the block explorer. There's a few confirmations and you can see there's some metadata on there including things like what is my video file name and my uh, video thumbnail. So I can actually use those to assemble. So if I drop in the manifest transaction ID and then any of the file names that it references, bam, there we go. I can actually see my, my thumbnail right there through the arif.net gateway. And let's actually see if we can load the video too. Same manifest. Paste in the video's file name. And there it is. Excellent. So again, this is a different uh, gateway than I uh, published to. So it's obviously getting propagated around the network. Cool. So. Let's actually go ahead and start downloading the entire playlist. Okay. Well, downloading and uploading to Arweave. Okay. Node index.js, YouTube playlist to Arweave, and paste in my URL and hit go. And it begins. Cool. Scroll up real quick, and you can see this is the same play the same playlist with 20 videos. Um, and then also, I'll just point out real quick the whole expected file size and existing files. The first video I downloaded is from this playlist, so it already has it in my in my uh, files folder. Um, and rather than just assuming that any file that has the same file name as what it's expecting is correct, it does actually check the, the file size from what YouTube reports the file size to be. So, so it makes sure that uh, it's been properly fully downloaded. So it moved on to the next video and grabbed the thumbnail. So that is going to take a really long time, so I won't make you wait with me. If you are interested in using Arweave in your app, I invite you to check out my simple app as a shortcut to getting started. Uh, and I welcome your pull requests if you find any bugs or you want to build it out any further or anything else like that. One of the best features of Web3 is that it's mostly built on open source software. So I'm also sure that Permacast, Acord, R Drive, Bundler, AR Connect, and even the Arweave protocol devs themselves would all welcome your pull requests and other feedback. You can find me online at twitter.com slash Devin R. James and Web3 Working Group on all socials at Web3WG. For our next video, I'm going to be shifting my attention to mining the weave. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that one. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and share it with some friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.